Okay, well, welcome back to uh, another work holding video. This video is going to be both um, work holding as well as a little bit of a product review. And this is going to be entirely on collets. We're going to be focusing on this Sherline part number 1160, which is a five piece WW collet set. And WW indicates the, the dimensions of the collet that we're using. At the end of the video or in a separate video, I'll go over what other options are other than WW in case you've heard things like uh, ER16 and ER40 and 3C and R8 and what all those numbers mean. So collets are going to be one of the fastest and most precise methods of work holding um, on your lathe. Now, they do have a fairly limited range of sizes, particularly in these WW collets. And the WW collets also have a very limited clamping range as far as what size. They're really designed to hold one size. Um, they don't have a whole lot of adjustability. So for each size of material that you need to work on, you'd need a collet. And here we just have five pieces that, that start from uh, 1 16th. We go to 1 8th, 3 16th, quarter inch, and 5 16th. And these two larger sizes don't actually run all the way through. I'm not sure if you can see that there's a, a step on the inside of there. So you're going to be limited on the length of piece that you're going to be able to hold. Whereas the 3 16 and smaller units do go all the way through smoothly. Um, so you can push a bar through the headstock. So this set includes five collets, uh, a draw bar. This is a collet adapter or a collet chuck, if you will. And they do include a knockout bar. Um, this is something I wish was included in the basic lathe package, but you do get a knockout bar in this package if you choose to purchase it. So to assemble this, um, we need to make sure that we have all other work holding devices removed. And we're going to take the collet adapter and slide it into the spindle of the lathe. It's just a friction fit. It fits in that uh, Morris Taper 1 or MT1, and it adapts it to hold our collets. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put in a quarter inch collet. And then we take our draw bar, insert it in the other end. And start it being threaded. It's still loose in there. We don't want to hold it too tight quite yet. Now I'm just going to use actually a, a, a milling cutter because it's what I have handy and it should work for this. This is a quarter inch diameter and I'm putting it into a quarter inch collet. Now already I can tell you it's a pretty tight fit but once we draw it up and tighten it in there more we're going to get a very very tight and precise fit. So I've brought our star at last word indicator in for a little bit of a closer view. So on this shaft, as we turn it, we're going to see we're getting about one and a half, maybe a little bit over thousandths variance. And that's just by throwing it in quickly. Um, one and a half thousandths is, is minimal. Um, that's about depending on the thickness of your hair, that's about a third of one hair's thickness for a human. Uh, depending on what part of the world you're from and such as that, because those will vary from two to, I believe, eight thousandths uh, is the thickness of a hair. So we're, we're pretty darn precise, and as you saw, we just slapped it in there. I mean, we didn't do anything else. Um, this is a fairly cheap bit. I don't know if maybe the bit is a little bit out of round. We'll indicate off of the, the chuck here in a minute and the collet and see if, if we get any different numbers there. But this is really the simplest, easiest way to, to do work holding. Now, when you're ready to switch pieces out, you simply turn the screw, pull it out, put a new piece in, tighten it back down. If that isn't fast enough for you, there is also uh, a lever opener for these collets. That's another accessory that you just simply flip a lever. You don't have to worry about turning a collet. If you're doing a lot of repeti repetitive pieces, then, then that really is gonna come into play. 
The other nice thing here is if we pull the piece out and put it back in, it's really nice because we're recentered again. We don't have to worry about orientation. So this is, is really a very nice way if you're working on very small parts. The biggest drawback um, to the WW collets is their limited uh, clamping sizes and clamping range. Um, and you can get into some fairly high costs by purchasing a, a full set of these WW collets um, from Sureline runs north of $900 uh, just for the collets. But if you do some particular sizes, uh, you know, if you work on a lot of quarter inch or eighth inch pieces, then uh, this is this is going to provide you a quick and easy method of holding those small pieces and getting very precise, very accurate repetition on them. Now there are other manufacturers out there that will make um, collets that are more precise, whether they be WW or other types of collets. So to remove it, we simply unthread the knob on the other end down there. Um, this will slide right out. We can then pull the, the draw bar out. And then we come in with the supplied knockout bar and just give it a couple of taps and out will come the um, collet adapter. I wanted to show you another additional option for this WW collet holder and that's this piece here which is um, usually referred to as a pot or step collet or a pot or step chuck. Um, this is a blank so it's designed for you to make it to whatever size you need. On the back we have that same shape as we have on our other collets but on the front, instead of a pre-made specified hole diameter, we've got a lot of workspace here that we can machine to an exact size or an exact shape um, to allow us to, to hold different and larger diameter pieces. Now, the reason these are often called step collets is these will often be stepped down. And I'll show um, making this as part of a project video probably. Uh, and how to adjust this and, and make it so that you have multiple steps on it. These come in three different sizes. This one is one and a quarter inch, so you should be able to hold up to one inch diameter pieces in this. Now, you won't have a whole lot of gripping surface on the depth, so this would be really for small or flat pieces, say like flywheels or small gears or, or items like that that you're trying to hold with around the outside diameter uh, or outside circumference in a very secure manner. So this does come in again three sizes, one and a quarter inch, one inch and three quarter inch. Um, part numbers are 2102, 2101, and 2100 respectively. And they also come with a small pin to insert in and to clamp down on while you're turning it so that you get a, uh, a good consistent and concentric recess. Another quick item that I wanted to mention in this kit is the draw bar that comes with it is actually hollow for the full length of it. So when you screw in a, a 3 16 or smaller collet in here, you'll be able to run uh, a part all the way through the head. Now again, you you're, are reducing what you can run through there by a significant amount due to the collet. Um, but if, it, if you're working on a 3 16 inch or smaller piece, um, it will go all the way through. Okay, quickly wanted to go over the size range of the WW collets that Sureline offers. Um, included in any of the packages, or you can download the sheet from their website, will be all their part numbers and the sizes. I believe the total number, total number of metric uh, collets is 78. Don't, don't quote me on that, though. Um, I will check when I publish a video and, and give you the right number if I'm wrong there. And then you have, uh, I believe, 14 or so um, fractional sizes. The fractional sizes range from 1 64th down to, on the large size, 5 16th. If you want to go any larger than 5 16th, then you're looking at one of those pot chucks. On the metric size, we started out at 0.3 millimeters and then increased by 0.1 millimeter. Um, all the way up to eight millimeters. Now, if you're going to be doing, a, if, if you're looking at purchasing these um, and you're going to be using them a lot, then 
typically you'll just buy the metric sizes because the metric sizes are all close enough that the, they have equivalencies in the, the fractional size. For example, 1 64th is 0, uh, 0.016, which is also 0.4 millimeters. So you don't need to buy both of those collets uh, because they are the same size, even though the printing in, on them is different. You just have to keep a, a chart handy so you can do the conversion if you are working with fractional sizes. Um, stepping up to 1 32nd is 0 0.031, and we see 0.8 millimeters, 0 0.032, uh, 0 0.1 millimeter, uh, 0 0.001 inches, so one thousandth of an inch um, variance there. We're, we're going to be okay with as long as it's smaller and not larger. Uh, this would clamp 1 32nd. Going up to 3 64ths, we see 0 0.047. 0 0.047 is 1.2 millimeter. So, so on and so forth. So, if you are going to purchase these, all you have to do is get the metric sizes. Um, if you're getting the complete set, you don't need to additionally purchase the inch sizes in the majority of cases, unless you particularly want to. So, now let's talk about the different types and sizes of collets. Um, on the Sherline, Sherline makes, makes two different types of collet. One is the WW collet that we've been talking about. The other is a mill collet. As you can see, uh, these are slightly different in proportion, and the WW collet is threaded on the outside, whereas the lathe collet is threaded on the inside. So these aren't interchangeable. We can't use the mill collets on the lathe or the WW collets, at least by default, on the mill. There might be a way to adapt, um, adapt this. I haven't tried it yet. And I wanted to correct one other mistake I made earlier in the video concerning using the various collets in the lathe and the mill. Um, for example, here I've got one of the mill collets and it does fit in the lathe, no problem. I completely forgot that the heads are identical between the lathe and the mill. So this is simply a, uh, will fit into a, a number one Morris taper or an MT1. And then the same is going to be true using the WW collets is you're going to be able to take those WW collets and its adapter and place it in the mill and use those same collets in the mill if you so wish. Now if you're looking at other mills, larger mills, you're probably not going to be seeing this type of, of a collet. You're going to see more commonly what's referred to as an R8. Basically just the big brother. I mean very very similar. This does have a tapered tip. Um, it does have a locking groove to keep to make sure it doesn't spin whereas the Sherline mill collet does not have a locking groove and relies on friction. And then these are going to be available in a wider range of sizes, but you're not going to be able to retrofit. I mean, just looking at the size of this thing, you're not going to be able to retrofit a Sherline mill to hold this type of a tool. Here's another one, a little bit larger size, so 7 8 inch, um, and we're getting pretty close to the capacity. I don't know if we can go one, one or two sizes larger than this, but uh, that's what an R8 looks like. So getting back to the lathe, we have quite a few options on the lathe. The WW is definitely one of the smaller ones. Um, the next size range that you'll probably step up to are what are known as ER collets. Now ER collets are a little bit of a different form factor, and by default they won't fit on the Sherline. However, there are some third parties that make a replacement head. So you, you get a whole new head unit, a new spindle, a new spindle nose, the whole thing. Um, and it's much larger through diameter on it um, to allow you to accommodate some of those ER collets or an ER chuck. Now those, those can cost quite a bit. You're looking at anywhere from, I believe, four to $600 is what I've seen um, for the majority of the replacement heads out there that will hold those. And then on an ER collet, you're possibly looking at anywhere from uh, $40 to $200 plus a piece in order to get those depending on what precision you want. You can buy some cheaper ones out there as well. Additionally, uh, just to give you another example, as I don't have any ER collets, this is a um, 5C collet. And there are 5C and 3C collets uh, for, for lathes, and then the, like I said, there are ER16, um, I believe ER32, ER40, there's a variety of ER sizes as well. The WW collet and the 
3C or 5C collets are pretty much identical in their construction. We've got a, a taper at the tip and then three slots with threading at the bottom to lock them into place. The ER collets, uh, which if you just do a Google search, you'll be able to find pictures of them. They actually allow for a wider adjustment range because they have um, many more grooves cut into them and grooves cut from both directions. Uh, so that, that allows it to, to expand and contract quite a bit more. Again, if you're going to be dealing with a larger lathe um, and needing that larger capacity, then these are some of the options you have. So we didn't even turn on the lathe during this work holding video, um, but these are, are very, very simple to use. I and mean, once you see how they, they assemble into the head, uh, which only takes a couple of minutes, they're very quick, very simple, very accurate to use. Um, the biggest drawback to them is their limited ranges of sizes. Uh, and if you're, you're ending up getting the full range of sizes, the cost being you know, closer to $1,000, makes this one of the more expensive work holding options if you need every single size. However, if you're working on small engines with shafts uh, that are eighth of an inch or, or other small diameters, then this can really come into play um, and make your life a lot easier on being able to remove a workpiece from the lathe and put it back on quickly, easily, um, recentered. The clamping force is distributed very evenly around the piece, so you don't have to worry very much about marring the piece. Uh, compared to a three-jaw or four-jaw chuck, which will leave uh, bite marks in the material oftentimes. So that you get that advantage here as well. So these are a nice option to consider um, if you're wanting to have that level of precision and speed and ease of use. Okay, so I mentioned checking where we were getting inaccuracy on those collets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that quickly now. Here, we're just checking the spindle of the lathe itself, and we're well under uh, half a thousandth. Um, probably would need a, a more accurate indicator to really see, but you can t tell that the, the needle's barely moving. Maybe we're at a, a quarter of a thousandth or so. Okay, so now we're on the collet holder itself, and we are seeing a little bit more movement here probably around one thousandth or so. Um, so now we really know where, where our, we're coming from with that run out. Let's go ahead and try to check one of the collets themselves last. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this with the machine on because we will drop into the grooves that are cut and that will show uh, quite a bit more inaccuracy than what we really have. So here I'm just going to move from one solid surface to the next with us at zero, there we're at zero, and there we're at about one thousandth. So we're about a thousandth off. I would guess the other half a thousandth came from that bit uh, not being perfectly concentric. So now you have an idea of how accurate the WW collet is. By spending more money, you can get things that are into the tenths of a thousandth in accuracy, but you're going to be spending a lot more money. And again, in most cases, a thousandth as we're showing here, it's going to be more than enough, uh, more than fine for accuracy in the majority of jobs. 